Hey guys, we're going to be going back for an updated riser clear on Dark Kokurayu. So Wanderer has been helping me this evening to optimize the party, make some changes, and just, you know, fit more damage on the party. Wanderer really wanted to make his own video for you guys, but unfortunately he was not lucky enough to get riser from the summon box, just like many players on Global. You know, you, he wasn't able to get Riser. A lot of players weren't able to get Riser, which really sucks. But, um, you know, again, huge, huge thumbs up to Wanderer for helping me during the evening. You know, we talked and we worked out how to get a lot better damage. So we're now going to be doing a dark team with this run. So let's give it a go, and then I'll show you a high roll, and then I'll explain... Um, the way the team is working as far as the changes we made. Now if you're looking for like the basics of what this riser thing is all about, check out the first video I made where I go into detail about the riser strategy itself. This is more this video is more about just the updates I made to that with Wanderer's help. Give him full credit for that. Um, so in peril uh, with the, on the boss and we're gonna focus riser and then we're gonna get the chain count score. So Summoner Yuna is going to quad, we're going to triple Darga from the Anima Esper, and Graviga from a Materia. We're going to triple Hotshot on Laura, and we're going to dual wield Cursed Current and dual wield Violent Current from a Flood Esper with these two guys. Let's go ahead and chain that up. That's going to give us the 100 count chain score to get it out of the way, because we're not going to chain to 100 any time other than in the fight. Any other time in the fight. I can't talk, I'm tired of running variants. Okay, so Yuna is now going to use the Anima Field. So as it turns out, after some testing, um, Amplify Fields do work on Riser. Normal Amplifies do not, but Fields do. So that's like a 30% damage buff to Riser right there, more than we had last time. So now Riser can just focus again, um, do this again. General Celeste will just turn on Cover. We can just guard Pekiota, and Laura can Needles. Now, you might be wondering why Pekiota is here. That's because of the counter chain frames. Um, he has really good counter chain frames for this party, even though, he he, even though he doesn't really bring anything. Okay, turn three. We're gonna shift Bulwark and do Dark Imbue on the party with Shadow Serenade. Um, the rest of the party can just pretty much guard, not guard, um, repeat the last turn. Yuna can guard. The rest of the party just repeats on turn three. We're covering the magic with General Celeste, and we're miraging it with Laura. Um, so turn four, we're going to have Laura do Explosive Shot to add more elements. We're going to do um, Rockin' Rhythm, the shifted LB of Bulwark for a stat buff, and the rest of the party can just reload their previous turn on turn four. Again, General Celeste covers the magic, and we've got... Um, she's provoking as well. Okay, so turn five, we're going to get ready for the kill soon. We're going to shift Laura, and we're going to do Volatile Ammunition. Now, Laura is kind of important for this specific strategy. Um, I, know you, I know I used Venera last time, but Laura has different counter frames, and we kind of need her frames for this strategy. Um, General Celeste, on turn five, is going to shift and do her Dragon Killer. If yours is the EX3, do the good Dragon Killer. Mine is not, so we're doing only 100%. Yuna can do her LB for a 160 Undead Killer. Bulwark, back to the base form, where we're going to do Bulwark's Blair for Instrument in Peril. And then we can just reload the other two guys, Pekyota and Riser. Okay. Next up is going to be turn 6 is the kill turn. So this turn is very important. You shift Celeste back to the base form. You shift Laura back to the base form. Laura can do Thousand Needles in the base form. It's very important the form you're in because different forms have different frames for countering. And we need base form General Celeste and base form Pekiota. Um, well, Pekia, I mean Laura Croft. Also base form Yuna. Riser can just focus again or store power. And then Bulwark is going to do Tonberry Boogie. And okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, and we're going to fish for a high roll, and when I get it, I'll show you, and then I will resume, and then I will explain the gear and the team and all that. So see you on a high roll. 
Alright guys, we're fishing for a crit with a high roll, so let's give it a go. Four point seven new high, but um I can do better. I can do better. Oh my god. <laughs> This is so meme-tastic, I love it. Alright, we're gonna keep trying this. Oh my god, rank 54. I'm, I'm gonna keep going for a higher roll, be right back. Okay guys, you just saw the edited in, um, high roll that I got, which was 14.75. Um, I ran the boss a few more times after that, and I tried to get another high roll. Um, this one, it's really, really irritating doing this clear, because you need to get a crit, and you gotta roll high. So it's like double RNG. It's a little bit of a headache. If you're willing to go for, go through the headache of fighting that RNG, you know, you can do good damage, but um, it's up to you. I'm, I'm a little bit tired of it today, so I'm gonna use that 14.75 clip as the, the show. Uh, based on my calculations, this exact team can go as high as 15.5, so 15 and a half. Um, if you EX3 your, I'm sorry, if you um, level 130 riser, you can get like an extra billion out of it. I, I don't recommend that unless you're like really, really desperate for this clear. Um, definitely try it first though, before you before you pull that trigger. Um, and then if you have like an EX3 General Celeste, you can technically go as high as 17 billion if everything on the world lines up. That would involve swapping Pekiota for Yigni, though. That is one variation here, is Yigni's shift form can replace Pekiota, but the frames are less forgiving, and it usually fails um, to properly counter-cap uh, Riser. So Pekiota is a little bit more forgiving as far as the frames go. So I'll go ahead and show you the gear, but I'm a little burnt out on rolling variants, so I want a break. Um, so General Celeste in the base form is dual wielding all eight elements with Poppy's STMR. Other than that, give her a hundred ice and thunder resist and she's got passive provoke with an item. Um, that's all that really matters. A little bit of Esper fill so that we can get uh, the, the field up on Yuna. Shift form, gear the same pretty much because we do shift to do her um, Dragon Killer. Now make sure you've got enough HP to survive because she does deal self damage when she buffs her Dragon Killer. Uh, Pekyota is Poppy's paintbrush and a dark weapon. Um, again, he is just here for the counter frames. That is the only reason. Now if you don't have him, Yigni's Brave Shifted form does technically work. Um, the frames are a little bit wonkier and they're not as easy, easy, or not as reliable, I should say, because it's actually all on the AI to do it. They're less reliable. I tried y Yigni for a few times. He does work sometimes, but a lot of times he doesn't, as far as the counter frames go. But if you don't have Pekyota, that is an option. If you do have Pekyota, he's a really good um, counter frame with General Celeste. Uh, Laura Croft, again, mixes as many elements as you can. So we did a wind and an earth and a water, and we imbued dark to the party we also imbued fire to herself only and we gave her a thousand needles shift form i think was just totally naked yep so she's a breaker now the reason she's important is her first hit on a counter is on frame number 15 and that bridges the hit of pekiota so it's kind of important to have laura croft for this specific strategy if you only have like venera or hawkeye um you know play with it maybe you can find a way that it works but Laura is a little important for this strategy. Uh, Bulwark is just using some LB fill and, um, you know, Esper fill, shift form, whatever. Base form, again, as many elements as you can. Um, we'll come back to him. Yuna, as many elements as you can. Um, we got a wind and a fire weapon. Uh, Graviga and quad cast with Irenes. And she does, um, uh, what's it called? The field and the 160 Undead Killer. And then Riser is using an instrument because we're using Bulwark, we're not using um, a gun any longer. Other than that, crit up. 
Uh, he does want both of the chain cap, the chain speed materials this time. So you really want Prodigious Performer and Promise from Childhood. Uh, that means our, our crit rate is only at 50%. So that, that's, why, that's why this clear is a little bit more of a headache. It's a lot more RNG than the other clear. Our crit rate is lower. Um, you know, we need to rely on variants. But uh, it does do more damage. You saw the 14.75. This team can go as high as 15.5 on a perfect roll. Um, you know, and the, the riser theoretical max is around 17 billion if you have an EX3 General Celeste, if you fit Yigni on the party and just deal with even more RNG because Yigni's frames don't always work. Um, and then if you want to, like, level 130 your riser. I don't recommend all that for this Dark Vision. That, that's too much of an investment. But, uh, you know, it's an option. I'm not, I'm not going to do it, though. And again, thanks to Wanderer for helping me optimize this team, like, very heavily. And thanks to Dream and Sycidus for coming up with the original... Uh, riser and bulwark combo. Anyway, see you next time.